Hello everyone, welcome back to Infinite Investors, the home for all new and non-investors. I'm Curtis and today we're going to be talking about the free trade ISA charge. We're going to be talking about one dividend payment that I've received. We're going to be talking about one stock that I've sold as part of my 2020 vision. Let's talk about the Robinhood launch. We're going to talk about free trades investment platform. I'm going to talk about REITs versus buy to let. And then I'm also going to do a performance update. So if you want to know more, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'm about 150 subscribers away from two and a half thousand subscribers. So thank you to everyone that's been subscribed for the beginning, through the middle and who's recently joined on. Infinite Investors is about helping all new and non-investors make sense of the market. And I do this in a number of ways. And one of them is my portfolio updates, which is my most popular series where I talk about my personal portfolio because I believe in educating through demonstrating and you can actually see what I'm doing and my rationale methodology, not as advice for you guys to copy me because I'm probably going to be wrong in 50% of instances, but just as triggers and as catalysts for you guys to think about your portfolios in similar or different ways so you guys can have a better performance. So yeah, thank you for everyone that's been following the journey since we started back in December. And um, yeah, hopefully there's more, more great stuff to come for the channel, but let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is free trades investment ISA which is now going to be charged so if you see that little man in the corner that little icon in the corner when you tap on that I'm not going to tap on it because that's my personal details but when you tap on that you will see an icon or a link or a section or tab whichever you want to call it that says manage your ISA and for me it tells me that my ISA will be starting to be charged from the 19th of December free trade's going to reach out to me to let them know how I can upload my bank details in order for me to start getting the charge. So the charge is three pounds a month, which is about 36 pounds a year. So I'm often asked, one of the most common questions that I'm asked is why did I choose, why did I invest in an ISA over a normal basic account? What is the benefits of an ISA versus a basic account? I've already created that video. That video is on the channel. I will leave the link in the description for that. Um, and people have said, which is fair, that unless you're going to hit the tax threshold, then actually a basic account is more you know, cost effective or more beneficial. So I wanted to outline some um, what the cost is going to mean based on you know different amounts that you might have invested with free trade. So it being 36 pounds a year, let's say that you invest 500 pounds on a yearly basis. What this would mean is that you need a 7.19% return annually to break even. And then everything above 7.19% is your true return. My portfolio at the moment is about 5%. So if I only invested 500 pounds in, in the same stocks that I hold currently, then I would at the moment be not be breaking even just alone from the, from the ISA charge, you know, if, free trade were to try to charge the ISA for the last year. If you invest a thousand pounds for the total year, then it'll be 3.6%, which is obviously easy to work out. So you would need at least 3.7% or 3.61% and more in order to actually start receiving a true return. If it was 1500, 2.4%. If you do 5K, 0.72%, 10K, 0.36%, 20K, which is roughly what I've got here, just shy, 0.18%. Um, now, in terms of how I feel about it, I feel good about free trade charging personally. Free trade is a business, like it's not a charity. They're going to have to start making money. You guys all saw the recent news of Draper, Esprit, you know, investing 15 million into free trade. I guarantee one of the first conversations after the investment happened in the boardroom would have been, okay, so how are you guys gonna start generating more revenue? The last free trade update that I went to, granted there have been more since, I think free trade mentioned that from their um, instant trades, which is the only thing that was being charged at the time, they've made about 20K. That was around, you know, April or something around that time. So, you know, it's not gonna be a sustainable business. We won't have free trade as a platform if they don't find ways to make money. So I do accept that free trade need to charge. Um, I, for one, am not too bothered by it, not even primarily because of the amount that I hold, because even if I didn't invest this amount, like I said to you, I would just use the basic account because free trade still provide an option to have a fully free service as well. So from that standpoint, people that invest a considerable amount of money or people that invest a small amount of money, I think 
both parties are catered for so i for one am fine with the with the free trade charge um and obviously as an investor into free trade i want to see them you know do well so one hopefully once they exit or float maybe in one day then obviously i make a return so yeah that's the way i see it the other way i'm looking at it as well is using my dividends as a way to pay for that charge so currently i have one monthly dividend stock incidentally it's the same dividend that i'm going to be talking about today that's paid me this week which is semb um, emerging market funds i'm going to just go into it down here so this pays me on a monthly basis um and i've received one pound 71 so far so the way i basically look at it is if i just double my holding that will cover my ISA charge per month. So I could just add another 500 into there or maybe just round it up to a thousand and then that would effectively cover the ISA charge per month as it's a monthly dividend payer. So one strategy that you guys might wanna look into is look for monthly dividend payers of which the last time I checked there were five. I've done a video on that as well. So that link will be in the description. Um, and what you can do is, you know, figure out what the yield is, figure out how much you would need to invest in order to make three pounds on a monthly basis. And that could be a way to potentially cover off, you know, your three pound charge. Um, so, you know, you don't see it um, from a from a from a count an accounting standpoint, so to speak. Obviously, it'll still come out your bank. But from a from a P&L standpoint, you know, you will still have that covered. I've talked about in my wealth video how passive income, you know, the wealthy generally use their passive income to pay for all of their bills and expenses and what's left over, they reinvest that money. And that wealth generation cycle is how people compound and become richer and become richer and become more wealthier. I'll leave the link in that video to the description if any of you guys haven't seen it. But effectively, that is the type of mentality you guys should be having for everything not just for your free trade charges but for everything in life for your netflix bills for any other bills that you might have you know trying to make sure that you get and generate passive income that's going to help pay for those expenses will allow you to retain a lot more of your earned income and hopefully you know become richer and wealthier in the future which is i guess the reason why we're all investing so that's something to definitely you know try and do as a general practice not just because free trade is, char is charging i will put the link to that the monthly description i'll put the link and obviously the benefits of free trade versus the isa i'll put all of those links in the description in case you guys want to go and check that out now as you guys may have seen i've sold one stock for my 2020 vision <laughs> And that was me singing, just in case anyone's trying to hate and say that wasn't me singing. It was me singing. I'm not going to be pressured by all of you lot to stop singing. So I just took some singing lessons in the last couple of weeks and um, it's drastically improved and it was the best 75p that I've ever paid. Anyway, um, basically I've sold one stock and that is the JP Morgan Emerging Markets Investment Trust um, and this is again part of my 2020 vision for those of you that don't know what my 2020 vision and why you just heard me singing I can see clearly now it's because I feel that this first year of investing with free trade has been one of the best learning experiences that I've had throughout the course of my life um, particularly obviously market but just in general anyway um, I figure it I figured out my mistakes I figured out what I've done well what I could have done better and so I feel like I'm seeing clearly in terms of what I'm going to do differently for 2020 so anything that's not forming part of my strategy that I'm slowly building up at the moment I'm starting to cull and get rid of um, in order to you know have a better performance going forward in next year I've been in profit this year which is good but obviously I want to I want to try and increase that going forward so I've sold JP Morgan Emerging Markets Fund conceptually I believe in exposing myself which sounds very very indecent I believe in having exposure to emerging markets um, I just believe that execution wise it probably wasn't uh, done the best and obviously you know hindsight is a wonderful thing I will potentially go back into emerging markets in the future I'm probably hoping that there's a bit more ETFs um, we've got two ETFs um, at the moment so if you type in um, emerging markets currently you will find a lot of trusts um, some bonds which is not 
I'm not talking about bonds specifically here, although I do hold this bond. You'll see VFEM and you'll see EMIM, and then you'll see, you know, generally mainly the rest of them are either bonds or trusts. So I'm hoping that um, when free trade launch a lot more stocks and ETFs, that there'll be a lot more emerging markets ETFs with better performance, just because actually the reason why I chose this specific um, JP Morgan fund is that when you look at the last year's performance and when you look at the max performance, 25% and 19%, it was much higher than what I saw on Vanguard being 8% and 24% and also much higher than what I saw on iShares which is 9% uh, and 40% which is okay which is decent but it's still still lower so I chose that based off its historic performance I chose it based off how it how it bounced back through the last recession and obviously at the time I felt that we were potentially going into a recession because this was about maybe four or five months ago when I did buy it um and so I felt that actually it's something that will be able to withstand and hold it based off its previous track record. We do know obviously past performance isn't always a true indicator of future performance, but I was confident that actually it's going to be a good um, potential investment. One of the challenges um, that I've got with it, um, just from a personal standpoint, is just primarily the costs. When you go to the costs and charges, you will see that the ongoing uh, charges is 1.02%. And I think as part of my strategy, I'm going to try and not hold things that have at least over a one percent cost i think one percent is going to be my one of my new criteria metrics that you know what if something is over one percent it's just a little bit too expensive now in this context and scenario had i one i invested late into it so if you look at the year's performance i got in i think when let's see when i actually first bought it I first bought it in July and then I've been dollar cost averaging ever since. So if we go to July here, we can see that I got it pretty much at its peak and it's been tailing off ever since. So that's just timing for me personally. Had I bought it at the very beginning, we might be having a different conversation, but we might not be having a different conversation. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I think the approach that I would take should I invest in something like this again in 2020 is just put a lump sum in similar to what I've done for um, the likes of uh, AMD and Shopify and then just leave it and then just buy it if it drops significantly by sort of by the dip um, but not really dollar cost average it um, at the moment now primarily it's probably due to my timing um but at the end of the day that can never be predicted so at any time you go into a stock for you it's the very first time but the stock has obviously been going on prior to that you know you can't always time these things you just got to sometimes get into something that you think is going to be good at the time and if it just happens to be you're buying at the peak then so be it so i can never have controlled that personally um, but what i can control is probably the way i choose to invest into it which i might change going forward so yeah that's been sold currently the money's just sitting in my account waiting to be reinvested um, i haven't decided where i'm going to put that money i didn't want to just drop it into the 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 stocks that have you know dropped at the moment my next round of investing is going to be next week anyway so um, I decided just to hold that money I'll add the funds in for my next round of investing um, and then decide where I'm going to put my next um, investments now the other thing to talk to you guys about is Robin Hood so everyone knows now by now and if you don't then this is obviously news to you that robin hood this week officially launched their waiting list um and they've basically been saying that they will um in early 2020 be onboarding people um within the uk to their robin hood uk platform and there's been a lot of debate on the free trade community within my youtube comments um within our community um, debates everywhere um, that basically you know will people join will they not join what's the pros and cons etc some people say it's competition some people say it's not some people will have both some people won't for me here's where I personally stand on the whole Robin Hood versus tree trade uh, tree trade versus free trade um, situation um, me personally yeah let me let me put it this way I have bank accounts with three different banks, okay? I have bank accounts with three different banks. I have credit cards with two different credit card providers. I use two page streaming services and a whole bunch of free ones, i.e. I use ITV On Demand just for Love Island. Like just when I watch Love Island, I will use that one streaming service. I shop 
in terms of grocery shopping in both Sainsbury's, Waitrose, Ocado, Tesco or Tesco Express. And, you know, when I'm feeding myself Marks and Spencer, I, I also... Personally, for me, competition is is the cornerstone of capitalism. Like, as a consumer, I like choice. I think options is a good thing. I personally don't like BMWs. Like, I can't stand them. I can't stand BMWs. But fortunately, as far as German vehicular engineering goes, I've also got Audi, Mercedes or Volkswagen, maybe not so much, but I've got Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes to to choose from as well. Like, I don't like BMWs because they charge you like £9 million just to diagnose the issue. And then once it's diagnosed, you can't even afford to fix it because it's literally an arm and a leg. I have both Sky Sports and BT Sport. I have both. So... For me, the whole point is that it's a free market and for such an important thing as where you put your money, having choice should be celebrated in my opinion, personally. Like, free trade should be celebrated for creating an opportunity to invest against the likes of Hargreaves Lansdowne, AJ Bell, Barclays, Lloyds, etc, etc, Degiro, etc, etc. I don't see why Robin Hood can't also have its place, personally. And to be honest, there's going to be more. There's going to be more that come into the market. It's not going to end here. We already know about Trading 212. We already know about Revolut. Um, we know about Evarvest potentially coming. We know about um, a whole bunch. I think I heard about an Australian startup recently that is potentially looking to launch into the UK doing commission-free investing. I've heard of Bucks. There's going to be loads. There's going to one day maybe M1 Finance. I don't even know if they charge, but they're probably going to try and make a, a venture into the UK at one stage. There's always going to be it's going to be lows. This is going to be an emerging an emerging trend. And one thing we don't even know what free trade's exit strategy is. I I I reckon. I mean, I don't reckon, but it's probable or it's likely or an outcome could be that they might want to be acquired by Robinhood or acquired by someone with much deeper pocket so that you know everyone that's invested actually makes a return on their crowdfunding investment and so anyone that's a, a shareholder in free trade actually makes a return because you know they either need to be acquired or they need to float you know in four five six years seven years maybe on the market which is you know probably going to be a bit more difficult than just getting acquired by someone and someone buying out all of our shares at a premium I think the point I'm trying to make is that me personally, I will have both Free Trade and Robin Hood. Even if it's just to try Robin Hood and see whether I like it or not, I will have both. Um, but primarily as things stand, I my primary brokerage account will always be Free Trade. That would be my primary. And the primary reason is because of this thing right here, the investment I So that for me is my personal biggest selling point of Free Trade not only that it's commission free but obviously it's commission free and I've obviously got the ISA as well um, so I will always try and you know hopefully fill up with 20k a year that's going to be my goal every year to try and you know hit 20k um, ISA allowance on a yearly basis um, and it just means I don't have to worry about tax or worry about I'm, I'm probably not going to make £2,000 in dividend payments even next year that I I doubt that. I think I made about £600 this year all in all in dividend payments. I doubt I'll make 2000 next year, but we shall see. Whether I do or whether I don't, I definitely won't make £9,000 in capital gains performance or £12,000 in capital gains, whatever the tax threshold is. I made a video on it with the accurate figure. I can't remember now. But whatever it is, I think it's 12 k I know I'm not going to make that in the next year, but I'm not doing it based off the fact of me doing it now or next year I'm doing it because I know that eventually in three four five years time when I'm thinking long term I will be hitting those tax thresholds and I'd rather all of the money be in an ISA so I don't have to worry about it but you know what sometimes I can't have everything in an ISA well, you know you guys know my current account at the moment I hold two REITs these two REITs I will continue to hold and unfortunately, free trade don't offer them into an ISA. So I have to have a basic account in order just to have these two stocks alone because these two stocks I want to, to continue holding. That is exactly the way I see Robin Hood. I see Robin Hood, I see my basic account as an extension to my ISA. So whatever I can't have in an ISA, I have in my basic account. And I see Robin Hood as an extension to my basic account. Whatever is not in free trade, either in my ISA or in my basic account, 
and I want that stock, I will get it within Robin Hood. That's literally how I see it, just, in, just in a, a, an extension of what I currently have. And the primary driver for me is gonna be the stocks. Because I know Robin Hood is going to launch with four and a half thousand stocks or whatever it is, 3,000 of them being US, and I know there's a limited number of US stocks on free trade at the moment, depending on when Robin Hood launched, that, that, that circumstance might be different, and, and I'll play it by ear. I will, I will get Robin Hood in order to you know review some of those stocks um, and see if any of them want to want to make an extension in my overall portfolio wherever it sits but the point I'm making is that for me personally it's so interesting to see the the sort of cult like following that free trade has and you know the debates on you know which platform you should have and which platform you shouldn't have I think you guys first of all need to just understand it's a personal choice for yourself whatever is your motivations or your driving factors should obviously steer that if your primary factor is i want an etf strategy then you're going to know that free trade is going to be better than robin hood for etfs so stick with free trade if your primary factor is you know conversion fees and forex then robin hood is potentially going to be better because there is no conversion fees and you get more access to us stocks if your primary factor is that i want everything to be tax free then free trade is going to be better for you if if you want things to be you know tax free. Some people I know don't even use their basic account because they would just want every single thing to be tax free, so they don't even bother buying REITs because they're not available in the ISA yet. Hopefully that's something that's going to change. I think as long as you figure out whatever the reason is for you, like what your primary driver is, then based off that you're going to make you know the right decision for yourself and that for me is you know is the main the main thing to you know personally consider but yeah i personally am excited for robin hood it's not to spite free trade or anything like that but it's just that competition is good i want to see what stocks are available and i want to see what other opportunities i've got to complement my current portfolio and, and make additional money and you know that simply is what it is Free Trade launched their video, their serverless, um, their text that video. So, you know, it's very, very probable that Free Trade, a lot of the features we've been asking for, is going to be ready by, by the end of the year. And, you know, we might even have a lot more stocks even before Robinhood launched. So, I'm excited to see the development of the Free Trade platform as a consumer and as an investor into Free Trade. And, you know, watch Free Trade grow and watch them grow into Europe and, you know, do a lot more cool things as well speaking of REITs that I was just on as well tomorrow I'm going to put up a video which is comparing REITs versus buy to let I mentioned in I think my last portfolio updates that REITs took a big drop um, I've explained why in my last video I'll explain again tomorrow in tomorrow's video um, but that video is coming up so definitely check that out because a few people have requested um, for that video to come up about whether you should invest in REITs or whether you should invest in buy to let properties and which one is going to be you know more profitable for you so hopefully you guys um, will like that but yeah as a general performance update um, it's been a very very interesting week so if you look at the seven day tab at the moment you will see it flick over to one month tab but let's go back to seven days yes that's what it should look like and um, I started the week as you can see, 19.134, closed the week, 19.132. There were some highs of 19.412, as you can see, um, and some lows of like 18.968, etc. as well. So it's been quite a, a choppy week. The primary reason for some of the choppiness within this week um, is to do with trade war. Um, as always, you know, there's been, it's been going well, it's not been going well, etc, etc. The pound's been rising as well. Um, and then obviously you've got the whole general election talks and debates and situations um, that's also been um, going on. So I think those three factors has probably meant that there's going to be quite, I would say, a mixed performance between um, all of our portfolios. It's going to really, really depend on what you hold. Um, I doubt everyone's portfolio is going to look similar to mine in terms of the trend for this week. I think it's just going to be a byproduct of what you, you know, what you generally have. But in terms of macroeconomic factors, those are really, really the main things um, that have potentially affected people's portfolios. And then obviously within your individual stocks, um, I'm sure you guys are checking the news to see what's been happening with your um, individual stocks. One thing that I'm looking forward to is obviously I tried to buy Shopify before the earnings made a made a, a silly mistake trying to time that um, and then 
then obviously I bought it, you know, at its peak and then it just started to drop. It's starting to recover a little bit. I didn't buy more when it dropped down here. Um, I just left it and um, and yeah, it's starting to recover. But I think we're now going into, you know, quarter four, right? And quarter four, you know, the biggest thing that comes to mind in quarter four is that is 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 going to be what? Thanksgiving, Black Friday um, and what's his face Christmas <laughs> that as well and and you know you could say you know January New Year shopping as well but I think you know there's probably going to be a lot of commercial activity when it comes to the likes of Amazon when it comes to the likes of Shopify or anything that's you know consumer based that has a little element of seasonality to it so I'm hoping that actually things rise but you know what last December things actually tanked because I, I got in, you know, when things were, were quite low and, and was doing well for the first sort of three months of this year. So, you know, we never really know what's going to happen. But I would suspect that I'm hoping that this starts to rise and, you know, the performance starts to, you know, get a little bit better from that standpoint. I did mention I'm going to produce two videos, a review of this year's performance and a video on my 2020 vision and strategy of what I'm going to do for next year as an investment so that is still on its way in terms of me actually getting rid of stocks that don't formulate part of it I think I'm probably I would say I'm probably about 80% of the way through to be honest um, it's not that much more that I need to do I've got rid of a, a, a very good number of stocks personally um, and I've and I've had two you know I personally think are great additions being Shopify and AMD as well. When Free Trade um, introduced fractional shares, which they have demoed as well, that's going to open up the world um, as well. When you think about Amazon, Google, and you know how expensive their share prices are, I know some people might be saying, "Oh, well, you can invest in Amazon and Google via ETFs like the S and P five hundred." Yes. But if you feel that the performance of Amazon and Google is going to be greater than the performance of the other 500 stocks or 499 stocks within those ETFs, then you'll realize that actually, you know, in some respects, by going via the ETF route, um, you are accepting a, a more lower, mediocre, safer performance, so to speak. So um, I think that Amazon and Google, I do think they're quite highly priced and and partially overpriced a little bit um but just because they're overpriced it doesn't mean that people won't still continue to buy them so you know there's definitely an opportunity there to you know continue um uh continue being part of that growth so yeah fractional shares will definitely help with some of those two purchases but yeah that's my portfolio update for today um still going through you know my personal strategy there are a lot more videos on the channel i produced a video about 21 stocks that are in danger if corbyn win an election so this is from an article it's not my personal views um, but i've shared that and you know my thoughts um with that as well i also shared a video on diversification looking at warren buffett versus ray dalio's opinions on diversification which wildly wildly vary so go and check those videos out um but yeah i will be back tomorrow with the whole um, REITs versus buy to let property. Other than that, take care, have a good weekend, and I'll speak to you next time with another investment video. Peace.